Good evening. Welcome to Tucker Carlson. Tonight, more drama from the ongoing saga of Peter Strzok and Lisa Page. Tonight, newly released text messages from the two of them. Messages that make it pretty obvious that some of our most trusted officials, people who hold sensitive posts in this country's most powerful law enforcement agency, have radically abused their power and hurt American citizens in the process, all for political reasons. It's a big story. The new text messages were revealed in a letter sent by Congressman Mark Meadows to the Deputy Attorney General, Rod Rosenstein. The texts were sent in April of 2017. They were part of a batch that you'll remember had supposedly been lost to some sort of technical glitch. Well, now, mysteriously and thankfully, we have them. Here's what they say. On April 10th, Strzok told Page that he wanted to discuss a, quote, media leaking strategy with her. The very next day, the Washington Post reported that the Obama administration had spied on Trump campaign advisor Carter Page because there was credible reason to believe that Page was an agent of Russia. We now know that's ridiculous. Carter Page is no more a secret Russian agent than you are. He's a former naval officer and an Annapolis graduate. But at the time, thanks in part to Strzok and Page and their propaganda efforts, the slander was taken deadly seriously. The story helped destroy Carter Page's life. But Strzok and Page weren't finished. On April 12th, Strzok told Lisa Page that two more articles were coming out about her, quote, namesake. That's an obvious reference to Carter Page. Then on April 22nd, Strzok texted this, quote, article is out, exclamation point. Well done, Page. Well, so far, that's the extent of what we know from this latest tranche of text, but it tells us a lot. It is now beyond doubt that executive branch employees worked to hurt the president they worked for for political reasons. This is a betrayal of constitutional order and of democracy itself. Why? Because the president is elected. His employees in the executive branch are not. All of their power derives from him, and his power derives from you, the voters. When they subvert him, they're subverting you. That's what the Constitution says. It's also clear, by the way, that there is rot at the highest levels of American law enforcement. We place tremendous trust in the FBI because they hold tremendous power over all of us. Some of them, it turns out, are abusing that power to spy on us and then leak information about it to the press, destroying people in the process. That's the worst kind of abuse of power. The left defends it. Why? Richard Goodstein is an attorney and former advisor to the Bill and Hillary Clinton campaigns, and he joins us tonight. So this, Richard, seems to me a nonpartisan question. Should, you know, take out the name of the president, take out the name of members of Congress. They're irrelevant from the point of view of most citizens. The question is, should the FBI be leaking damaging information about American citizens, especially information that turns out to be false? Uh, Tucker, in the lead up, you said that's the extent of what we know when, when you were talking about the uh, struck uh, text. That's, that's, with all due respect, not true. There were two emails that preceded this one about media leaks. These are texts, not emails. Texts, right? sorry, where he yep. basically said to Page that, there, that the DOJ was getting all political and worked up about changing the media leak regulations one, and then there was a second one the same day that, of this okay. one that you referenced that said, no, uh, look, if, if if um, Comey and McCabe are going to be changing this, we need to talk with them. And then there was this one that you referenced. Uh, look, I like Mark Meadows. I want to give I'm, him the benefit I'm, of the I'm, doubt I'm, here. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm confused. I, well, you're, let you, me you, just you be make, totally clear. No, no, no. no let me just you're just having as totally a predicate clear. for this discussion something that's fa no, factually no, 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 untrue. No, no, no. Hold on. Hold on. It's not factually untrue. I'm well, quoting from the text. I don't pretend incomplete. to know the full, hold on, the full extent of what they mean. We don't know. And I, and I hope I don't pretend that I do. Here's what we do know, that these two FBI employees knew about news articles attacking Carter Page, I think on the merits unfairly, before they appeared. Yeah. They were part of a leaking strategy. I'm not saying they're the only people involved. I'm not saying they broke federal law. I'm asking you a really simple question, which is, are you comfortable with this? Are you okay with this? And sorry, there again, your predicate is just not true. When he said, well done, that was in reference to a New York Times story on April 22nd about Comey. So, when, so you're trying to conflate two things that just are unrelated okay. to make a story. I understand so, it's a bad time so for Trump. I get it. But that's just not no, no. true. R R R Richard, this isn't actually about Donald Trump, and I don't want to blow your mind by saying that not everything in America is about Donald Trump. It's possible to take the players out of it and ask principled questions about of what course. our government ought to be doing in our name. But and this is really context. simple. 
That's I all. think, no, no, the context leaves one thing crystal clear, which is Page and Strzok were part of a media leaking strategy, leaking information about investigations they were privy to to the press. And my question is, are you, this is a really simple question, are you comfortable with it? It's okay, I know you don't like Trump, but it's okay yeah. to say that you're not comfortable with that because it is contrary to our constitutional order. Correct. You're saying, well, let's assume the sun rises in the West and then having a bunch of questions predicated on it. Tucker, I so, just so, read so, you the two. So, so are you, hold on. So I want to know what you're saying and, and I'll get, let you finish. Are you saying that these texts do not suggest that Strzok and Page had a hand in leaking information to the press? Is that I'm what saying, you're saying? I'm saying any fair inference, they're talking about the DOJ changing their media policy, right? And they're talking about the media reg policy and the one that Mark Meadows references in his, his letter to Rosenstein is, is comes after that. That's what seemingly, no, 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 by but, all but, accounts, but I don't, no, no, but, 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 but hold on, hold on. And I'm not here to defend any member of Congress or any politician. I'm just asking you a very simple question, which you are dodging, which suggests that you are the one who is spinning and not me. And my question is really simple. Are you saying that on the basis of the evidence we received today, you don't believe they were privy to leaking? I don't I, think you can say that. You don't, you can't say that. They I'm were, and it's I'm obvious saying, from these texts. I'm saying there's zero about these texts that indicate whether they're leaking or not. And incidentally, Strzok had a 10-hour hearing. They could have asked him the direct question and, and nailed well, him for perjury. That's their problem. I don't get, look, look, I'm not here to defend Republicans in Congress, comma, that's for sure. I'm here to defend the interests of citizens who ought to Agreed. be really worried if law enforcement agencies are leaking information, right. especially false information, like Carter Page is a Russian agent. No, he's not. Yeah. No one believes he is. They destroyed his life. That doesn't bother you? Is yeah. there no civil libertarian impulse left in you? I'm serious. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My touchstone on all this is Strzok knew about the Trump investigation before Election Day and sat on it. If he was out to get Trump, he would have shared that with the press. That's the thing uh, he could have done to undo case. Trump. You, you're, you, okay. I hope the civil lib libertarians come back to your party because we need them. Richard, okay. thank you. My pleasure. Alan Dershowitz is a civil libertarian, famously so. He's a retired Harvard Law School professor. He's the author of the book, The Case Against Impeaching Trump, and he joins us tonight. Professor, it, does it bother you that a law enforcement agency, and it doesn't need to be the FBI under Jim Comey, it could be any American law enforcement agency at any time, would leak damaging, in some cases classified information about targets of their investigations? Why? Why would you want to live in a country where that happens? I've been bothered by this since J. Edgar Hoover. J. Edgar Hoover, who notoriously lived by leaks, he would threaten political enemies that he would leak information about their sex totally lives wrong. and about their private life. And it was wrong. It was wrong then. It's wrong I now. Agree. And when an FBI agent or a prosecutor leaks grand jury material, it's criminal. What we need now is an objective investigation by the Inspector General, by the Office of Professional Responsibility, into these leaks and into what was meant by the email that said that we have a leak strategy. It's hard to believe that that meant that we have a strategy to stop leaks. It seems much more plausible that he was talking about a strategy designed to leak things selectively to the media in order to achieve the goal he had set out for himself, namely to have an insurance policy against electing a man who he thought was dangerous to the country. Look, he has a right to his opinion. He had a right to vote any way he wanted. He of doesn't course. have a right to try to influence the outcome of an election through leaks. Now, I'm taken by the point that he may not have leaked before the election. We have to look into that. We have to find out about that. And that's what the Inspector General is about. Now, your previous guest mentioned the investigation by Congress. But as far as I know, at least I didn't know about this email during that investigation. He wasn't asked about it. If that email exists and is authentic, it should have been in the hands of the people who are asking him the questions. He may have to be called back now to answer questions about what he meant under oath what he meant by saying we have a leak strategy. I doubt that he will say under oath, oh, it was intended to make sure there were no leaks. That just doesn't pass the giggle test. So very quickly, why are more people not outraged by this? Does anyone want to live because in a country where a law enforcement sides. agency... I know, but this isn't a side. This is the side of every American who's subject 
to the FBI or any law enforcement agency. I mean, this, this should be it scary so to Democrats as well as dangerous. Republicans. It is so dangerous to every American. Today it's Trump they're after. Tomorrow it could be Bernie Sanders or Hillary Clinton. And the day after tomorrow it could be you and me. That's why every civil libertarian, Democrat and Republican has to be concerned about government by leak. Look, we want full disclosure. We want a lot of information that's now classified to be disclosed. But there are proper ways of disclosing this and you know who's at fault for this more than anyone else Comey because he leaked information and laundered it through a professor at Columbia Law School shame on that professor and shame on Comey if Comey didn't have the courage to stand up in front of a TV camera and say look I feel so strongly about this that I'm gonna give you this information but no he snuck the information to a law professor who collaborated with him in getting the information and in causing the appointment of a special counsel without having the courage of his conviction to stand exactly. up. That's what a civil libertarian would do. That's but what a patriotic American would do. Of course, but now he's the hero of the resistance. He's Charles de Gaulle. Uh, Professor, thank you very much. Great to see you. My pleasure. Thank you.